Corsa Race is, uh, yeah, the new, the new leader in lightweight ice axe design. My name is Brett Merlin. I'm with Camp and Cassine Climbing Equipment. I'm really excited to chat with you today about our new line of Corsa ice axes. One of the first new axes that we've added to our line is the Corsa Race. This is the lightest certified ice axe in the world at 185 grams. We took a lot of what makes the Corsa ice axe so great and ultra light and shaved it down even further by tactically adding um, holes in the axe to reduce mass as well as shaving off some of the sidewalls of the axe to re reduce mass even further. This axe is very much designed for the absolute ultralight uh, ski mountaineering racing. Weighs in at 185 grams and will sell for 159.95. Uh, very excited for this to be the new um, pinnacle in lightweight ice axes on the market. We really trimmed this whole axe down to be the bare minimum and we removed everything that's not essential. Um, so it comes with no plug. This axe will only be available in the 50 centimeter. It is designed to be as light as absolutely possible while still passing the UIA B test for uh, mountaineering PLAs. This is all aluminum. So this is an aluminum tool. Um, we've also redone a bit of the geometry within the pick and the ads to make it a little bit more pronounced, as well as the pick underneath the tool so that you can hold fingers underneath it in a more comfortable way um, when walking in a self play position. Technically, some things could come through these holes, for sure. Um, but for the person who's really interested in buying this axe, they are willing to forego that for the absolute ultralight. One of the other benefits of adding holes in here is it does have added benefit of it adding grip to the product without um, adding any mass to it and actually removing mass. Oftentimes, especially in some schema races in Europe and slowly becoming schema races in, in North America, they require, are beginning to require ice axes. They need to meet a minimum standard um, and Camp has made this ice axe exactly to that standard and nothing more. Um, the main focus of this product is to meet the absolute minimum standard within some of these races and to make the absolute lightest product. The reality is it's probably not going to be used a whole lot. Um, often these things have um, you know, a lot of support behind the races already. Um, this is not the kind of thing I'd want to take on my everyday ski tour or my everyday uh, mountaineering objective. It's very, very specialized, um, but it is um, really unique in that way. You'll also see that the entire Corsa range, um, the Corsa ice axe, which we all have used for many years, sees similar redesigns in geometry um, under, the, under the pick and the ads. The Corsa ice axe is now kind of in an interesting and unique position that it hasn't been in the past. This used to be our lightweight leader. And now that it isn't with the Corsa race, we still keep it in the line because it's a phenomenally lightweight ice axe for the price at only 119.95. We do find that PCT hikers really, really like using this ax during high snow years in the Southern Sierra. Um, during that season, this is one of the most popular axes sold in that entire region of the country. And the course of Corsa Nanotech still has the same story of the Sandvik steel pick and spike that it's had in the past with that slight bend. We did remove some of the adhesive grip on it and added um, just kind of a, a, a different depressions of, tr of grip um, in the main, that main area. Done that to reduce some weight. Um, I believe these have shaved off a couple grams of weight from their predecessors as we continue to evolve the line of trying to make the lightest piece of gear possible while still maintaining the core function of the product for the climber. The other axe that we've added to the line, which is particularly notable, is the new Corsa Alpine. The Corsa Alpine is very much a utility axe. This utilizes the ultralight design of the 7075 aluminum shaft that Camp has been known for within the Corsa line. And then we've added a full chromoly steel head to this tool. This is the kind of tool that ski mountaineers have been looking for for a really, really, really long time from camp. And it does uh, weigh a couple grams lighter than the majority of the axes within this class. Um, and most importantly, it has a chromoly steel adds uh, in pick. So this ax can really be pushed in a, a lot of ways. And it's gonna retail for only 119.95, weighs uh, 240 grams in the 45 centimeter. Another really interesting thing with this axe, unlike a lot of other ultralight, steel-headed, lightweight aluminum shaft axes, is that this is gonna be available in the 45 centimeter, the 55 centimeter, and the 65 centimeter length. 
most other axes within this class were only available to the 45. From what we've seen, that 45 centimeter is mostly utilized by ski mountaineers, but it's not quite long enough for a lot of the mass market mountaineering needs of those who are looking to go a little bit lighter in their setup. So that 55 centimeter and that 65 centimeter is gonna really open up this ax for a lot more utility for that general mountaineering crowd. One of the big feedbacks that we've been getting with the Corsa Nanotech that people have always wanted was some type of a, a more robust ads on the back because they get used to a lot of the steel in the pick and um, in the spike. The Corsa Alpine really helps to address that problem um, and more, being, being a one singular whole piece within the pick um, and then having a, a very hard ads that's very much utilitarian. The steel versus aluminum mountaineering axe conversation um, is a really important and compelling one. And at camp, we really believe in having the absolute right tool for the job. And digging a little bit deeper into that is how light can we go while still me meeting the needs of the route in the condition in that day. And so different axes will be appropriate for different routes and different conditions. You know, if we're climbing more of a snow climb without much with like loose, loose-ish snow, um, maybe some neve uh, here and there, not much ice at all. That allows us to go down more of aluminum as a material because we can really take the benefit of the lightweight because based on the condition of the, of the element that we're climbing, it's um, aluminum is an appropriate material to use for that. Once we start going into more mixed terrain, some snow, some ice, maybe some rock even, we have, out of necessity, we need to start using more durable materials. Um, and so that's what this progression looks like. This is ultralight, bare minimum kind of need. Not the strongest axe out there, again, meets the minimum UIA V standard test um, for that. The Corsa, this is a step up from that, which you get um, you know, still aluminum frame, but you know, slightly stronger within the shaft because we don't have holes drilled in it or mass taken away. For people that still want the ultralight, we do have uh, the Corsa Nanotech, where all the main contact areas, like the pick and the spike, can be used in you know, a little bit of icy terrain, but you don't really want to push it a whole lot. You get that penetration that you might need out of this. Unfortunately, you can used to have you know, aluminum ads with this, so if you're not needing the ads a whole lot, this is another way to save weight. If you really need more durability from there, then you can graduate into the Corsa Alpine. And this will allow you to really kind of push this axe in a number of different ways, even to some very light ice climbing. Bear in mind that it has no, not much swing weight to it. Um, but a lot of ski mountaineers are skiing some really interesting routes and climbing up through mixed and rock terrain. Um, and the Corsa Alpine is going to meet a lot of those basic needs. No hammer option on the Corsa Alpine. Um, but you can consider a lot of other different combinations of tools, whether it's like the Corsa Alpine with an x light hammer. You're likely going to need two tools anyway, and you might need a, a hammer with some legit weight behind it if you need to place a piton. You know, having a tool like this, even if it did have a hammer, doesn't have a whole lot of momentum behind it when banging pitons. It's worth having you know, more of a T-rated tool in that way, if that makes sense.